Hey there, Mission Control. Well, today is a big day. We're going to be doing static load testing and water retention test on the base and reservoir. If you've been following along, you know that previously we used stainless steel as our material of choice. It's food grade. It was easy to work with and had skills with welding before, though I had to learn new ones. And making a watertight reservoir when welding is, as the pros say, difficult. <laughs> and as an amateur, near impossible. Every one of the reservoirs we make for our initial eight of these towers that we're going to build are all going to have to go through a water retention test to make sure that they actually are retaining water correctly. Now in the future we'll be going to thermal molded plastics, which we really wanted to do for this go around, but the mold cost, while extremely reduced from injection molding, is still very high. The mold for the reservoir is like $16,000 and we just don't have that. So we have to make do with plastic welding. So we're gonna go out and test today. Some numbers, the tank, it fills to about four inches below the lip. And when it's at that range, it's roughly about 55 gallons of water. And with 55 gallons of water, that comes out to be about, what is it, like 460 pounds, roughly. Just roughly, I kind of did some quick math. I, I didn't calculate the exact volume of the tank. It's smaller than what we had, which was 63. So 55, that's uh, about right. So we're gonna go out. I got a little test set up out on the driveway here. It's a nice enough day. It's actually, it was really, really nice last week, like 61 degrees, it was spring fever, but the temperature's dropping again and it's down in the forties today, but fine enough day for us to go out and do a test. And we're gonna see if this thing's gonna explode or not on us. That's it, let's get out and see the test. This test is gonna prove two things. One, can the structure hold? And two, are the welds that I did good enough to hold? Had to do some new structure components here. These brackets are new and different. The ones that I originally had planned and designed to, they are not holding everything strong enough. So I actually had a problem where I had to get it on the 3D printer and print those up. Pretty happy with them so far, but we'll see how they perform under load here. One of them cracked sadly when I was putting it together, so I'll have to reprint that, but it still seems okay for this test. The other side's panel is removed, so I can actually look in there and see how things are going. I'm still missing a part, so I don't have all my valves on, so I'm actually using a pair of vice grips to close one of the hoses. Otherwise, everything should just work, so I'm going to go get the water going, and <laughs> we'll see. Here we are, probably do some phases here, and we'll load it, and we already have some leaks. Oh darn, yeah, leaks on the seams. They're not bad. Let's see, one, two, three, three leaks. We have about five inches of water in the very bottom. We got more leaks now. We're gonna mark those. Ah, too many things at one time. All right, so yeah, we got some leaks underneath. I was hopeful that I wouldn't, but we got them. They're small, they're not bad so far. And so far, the structure is holding well. We don't have any real deformation going on. The tank is holding nicely on the sides. It hasn't really bowed out at all. It's gonna start. Six small leaks and seven. I cannot wait to move the thermal molding here. So I'm gonna have to weld another eight of these. So really learning how to do the welding is gonna be important. Welding, we kind of knew, you know, what was gonna go on there. We had that experience with the stainless steel before, so it's not shocking that we have small leaks. It's actually better than the stainless steel when we did it. What's really important here today is the structure and how well does it hold. Now what should be happening is all the load should be transferring through the four corners down. And as long as we don't see a massive deformation of the structure, I prefer none, but Everything deforms a little bit. I don't know if you can see it, but the water is here in the tank and it is on a slope. So it's here now. We're about halfway full. So it's gonna be roughly 250 pounds that's sitting in there. And we are starting to get some deformation on the side plan deformation that we knew the tank would expand a little. It's got about another eighth, oh, I'd say, yeah, about an eighth of an inch before it starts to touch this right here and it is deforming on the downhill slope here so having it flat would be a better test it's now touching right here just a little bit but you can see it's it's not tight or anything and all plastic tanks deform we got a little bit further to go till we get to our max fill point which is about four inches from the top we are now expanding on this side oh, it's starting there now it's starting to tighten up 
We've touched this cross member now and it's pinching. And now we're pinching on the other side as well. We only got about another two inches. Definitely sloped right there. We're gonna make it. We're getting really close. We got a big leak up here. We might have a failure. <laughs> Okay, I'm actually gonna stop the test. So we're gonna stop the test. Start the drain. Yeah, that's gonna fail if I don't do something. Start the drain. This is a new drain solution. That one's a primary drain. This is actually the supply line. So now we have a new drain. Turn the water off. basically all the way around the bottom of this unit spots where we have leaks coming out <sighs> it's just one of those things we have to deal with just like the stainless steel where we had the issue of leaks we have the same issue with leaks here let's see if I can give you a shot on the other side while it's draining so here we go you can see in there there's leaks that's coming out here but that's right back here you can see it got tight, but everything's holding. So I think we're gonna be okay. This is our actual fill line where we wanna to get to, and that's where we got. Here you can see the tank is doing all right. I'm gonna go underneath. That's a good leak right there. And then we have small leaks basically all the way along those seams there. So we're gonna have to re-weld those as best we can and might just cheat and yeah, we've been here before and we know i can weld this all day long but in the end it might just be better for these early ones just to go with the silicone minus that big one over there because that is structural problem we'll get it drained out give it some thinking and we'll get on with it but this is a good structural test we had like one more inch to go and we would have been able to complete the structural test and then let it sit for a while you don't move it or anything when you actually fill it. So once it's filled, it's a stationary load. It's not a dynamic load. So we don't have to do any like moving or vibration, kind of like big vibration or stuff. But we just had to do stationary static load test. Uh, and it did all right. But the leaks, I want to say I'm upset, but really kind of expected. I was hopeful I wouldn't have any because it was plastic welding. It was way different. But it is what it is. We just need to fix it. So we'll get on that. Well, it's been quite an exhaustive last week and a half here doing this build. We've got the CNC machine working. We've got the base built. We've got the reservoir built. We've got two row decks built. We've got the new lid solution built, which are really nice. In fact, uh, let me go show you those. Well, I started off here, but I should have shown you guys. So on the first version design, you actually access the grow volume from the side. There's a flap and that flap was problematic. It lets water out, lets critters in. It's just not very pretty either. The new system here has actually removable lids. Very, very much a nicer solution, more eloquent solution. With these, they edge in and you put them down like that. There's a little bit of extra space in here, so there is some gaps, but all in all, not bad. I think we are gonna have to go to a black row volume though with black lids and probably go to a white structure. I think we're gonna have to flip our color scheme in order to really help protect against algae build up in the grow volumes and make them more opaque. I had hoped that the plastic that we got, the white plastic would be more opaque than what it is. It's actually more translucent than I really expected. So the intent here is that you can plant a lid like succession plant, right? Plant this one one week, plant this one maybe two weeks after, two weeks after, two weeks after. And then when you harvest, you just take the whole thing off, right? You don't have to take each individual cup off and be here with dirtiness and all that kind of stuff. You don't want to keep things as clean as you can for food safety reasons. So you can literally, you'll be able to come in, lift this out, and just imagine that's filled with food. There's some things I think I want to do. I think I want to put some cross members in here to help tighten it up a little bit on its structure because they are a little bowy down the middle, but every bit of structure we add is more cost to the customer. This is going to fill with plants, but I'm putting probably 10, 15 pounds of pressure on here, which your plants shouldn't really ever get that heavy. So. I think we're gonna be okay. And then when we get the thermal molded, everything's gonna line up a lot nicer than what I have because the welding just leads to thermal expansion and deformation that is hard for me to manage. Though I did weld these and I'm getting better. The key thing is speed. <laughs> speed and double side, right? If you get one side welded, you gotta weld the other side to compensate for the thermal delta that's there so that it straightens out when it's all said and done. But I like these new lids. I really like the new design. 
And every time we iterate, we're just getting better and better and better. So I think as we look at the testing that we've been doing up in the garage, the testing we're doing down in Houston now, we're really seeing that these systems work. And what we need to spend a lot of time on is just optimizing and determining efficiencies and proper methodology, the right settings, if you will, and populating the app so that when people get these, they don't have to know anything. They just have to do what the app says and food's gonna grow because systems are definitely growing food. So I've been keeping a lot of red lines. Uh, there's one, it looks like a term paper you turned in and your teacher just decided to bleed all over it, right? So we have lots of notes in here. I'm gonna be adding some more notes today. That's a 3 8 inch drain that's on there. And I did 3 8 because I standardized all supply lines to 3 8 but the drain should probably be really more like one inch or you know three quarter inch probably, not three eighths. Minimum it needs to be half inch. So we're gonna be adding a red line here and it's real simple. You come in and you just say, not three eighths, needs to be at least three quarter, half inch to three quarter with three quarter being preferred. And then when I go through what happens with all these red lines is I literally have to go through page by page, you know, there's quite a few pages here. I have to sit down in front of CAD again for, you know, weeks and address each of those red lines and get them in there. And this is important for repetition, right? We want to be able to reproduce these quickly, really, really, really fast. So you got to get your design dialed in. You got to get your bill of materials all dialed in. You got to get your process procedures. Everything's got to be dialed in. And then we just start printing, not literally printing, not like that, but like, you know, manufacturing them assembly line style. So things are coming together. It's actually really exciting though. I will report, I am exhausted. <laughs> Usually I only have one cup of coffee. Today I had it at two cups. We just had daylight savings time. That never messes me up. I can travel east coast to west coast, three hour delta, and usually be pretty okay. But today I was just exhausted. I skipped my workout and I think it is my body, you know, I haven't been hungry in the morning at all. So I've been not eating breakfast because I'm not hungry. And then I've been having my shake, which is a protein meal replacement shake for lunch. And then I have a really healthy dinner. And for me, I have to be in that calorie deficit when I'm working out in order to even lose fat. And I have lost about an inch off my waist so far in the last two months. It just takes me forever. I'm essentially in ketosis in the morning. So those that are gonna tell me to do keto, I'm essentially doing that because I do enter ketosis through intermittent fasting. But man, oh man, I think I've actually got to the point where my muscle is bulked up enough to where I need to start eating more. I'm looking forward to getting in tonight, getting a warm shower, because it's a little cold out here today, having a nice meal, loading up on some, some carbs and some proteins, some sugars, and just kind of getting that energy back in my body. And waking up tomorrow, and I think I'm gonna have a lot more energy, be able to come out here and get it done. I think we're gonna have to run into town I only have stainless steel colored silicone and I don't really want to put it on the inside of the really nice white pretty reservoir here. But tomorrow we're going to have to obviously re-weld that reservoir. Parts should show up for the reservoir drain so I don't have to use the vice grips anymore. And we're waiting for the fans to show up. I mean, those are the last parts we have showing up now before we're really going to be able to say I have everything here. And those are actually back ordered. I didn't forget those. They just got back ordered and it's been over four weeks. They should be here by now. So we'll see what happens. Really cool 3D printer being able to print those brackets. Sadly, it means that we have a custom part, but we can deal with it temporarily with a Modix. So, you know, that thing again continues to pay for itself time and time again. The amount of iterations that I go through on that thing are not insignificant. So. Oh boy, I hope you've enjoyed following along. We got a lot more to do. This tower is gonna to get built and it is gonna get shipped to Houston. It's not gonna stay here. Then we've got another two towers to build to go to Houston. I actually ordered cardboard boxes today for shipping because we changed all the dimensions so everything fits in standard boxes. So those should be here this week. With these issues that we're dealing with, I'm hopeful, knock on wood, that we should be able to get this tower built, get the electronics in, have all the testing done and then take it apart, box it up and send it to Houston where it will sit with the double decker that's down there right now, which we're actually having some problems with. I share that because it's a good thing. It's actually good when you ship these things away and you have problems with people that are nice to you because then you can figure out what to expect when things go out there and you can fix it before you send it to a real customer. So it's like a bad news that's actually really good news because you're always going to have problems because no one's perfect.
I know I'm not perfect in many ways. <laughs> Praise Jesus. That's what I got to say about that. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe, ring the bell so you get notified when I put up new videos. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Patreon. In the meantime, this is Real Martian, out.